Because what this story shows is a systematic problem with our intelligence community and the way that it is functioning. And I'm going to explain. You remember that when we did our analysis the other day, there was one thing in particular that was taking place in that whistleblower complaint that I said, and I, looking at the information that I had at the time, I would have said exactly the same thing if I had it to do over again. I didn't misspeak. I said that the one thing that is going to cause problems is the claim that is central to this whole thing. Not that Trump did a quid pro quo or a promise because we already debunked that. We already looked at the call transcript. We can see that that never happened, that the whole Giuliani thing, that it was actually the president of Ukraine, not President Trump that suggested that. President Trump sent Giuliani over there at the president of Ukraine's request. So all of those claims in the whistleblower, that was debunked. When it came to Rudy Giuliani, everything that he claimed about there being a quid pro quo, that the president was withholding financial aid or military aid or giving something to the Ukrainian president in exchange for looking into his political rival, we found out that that was debunked. We found out that Biden was not at the center of it. His name was only mentioned one time, and it was almost kind of in passing, to be perfectly honest. We found all those things out. And we know that from the transcript, so this guy has thoroughly debunked the one thing that was in his report that I said, all right, this may be a problem for the president. This may be a issue for him. You remember what that was? It was the fact that he was taking the calls and abusing his power, his authority as president, to put unclassified documents that he felt were too sensitive into a separate vault of things that contain classified information. That was the problem. Because regardless of all the things, all the details surrounding it, if he's taking something that is not supposed to be classified and saying, you know what, the media might take this the wrong way. You know what, Congress might take this the wrong way. Even if President Trump was completely innocent and didn't actually do anything wrong, if he's just using this to cover his own tail, and keeping this from Congress and keeping this from the normal channels by putting it into a separate file that is reserved for classified information when there was nothing classified inside the phone conversation, then that's going to be a big problem for the president. That is still an abuse of power. But even that claim is no longer legitimate, and I'll explain how that was actually debunked over the weekend. Remember, we're only, what, five, six days out from this story breaking? And that already every single piece of this whistleblower complaint has been completely deconstructed. Everything that he was complaining about has been completely taken apart just because we now have information. We now have the transcript of the call, all of those things. So here's the reason that that claim no longer holds water. Not to say that it didn't actually happen, just that we now have a reason behind that. They've done this for all the calls. You'll remember that in the whistleblower complaint, the claim that it is making is that President Trump was doing something nefarious, was making a deal with the Ukrainian president to dig up dirt on Joe Biden, and because he knew that was wrong, because he knew it was going to get him in trouble, he says, you know what, guys? That call may be one we've got to put in the classified vault. But it didn't happen. Do you know why it didn't happen? Because they've been doing this with all the calls. Why? You remember back early in his presidency, when it turns out that the media got a hold of several calls that the president was making to different foreign leaders? I think that one of them was the French president, and there was nothing bad in the calls. But the fact is that there is a certain level of privacy that is understood, not privacy from the public forever, but the freedom to, to speak freely and to not have to worry about the media, not have to worry about the reaction to all this. That is something that the president needs. He, just like the leader of any other nation would, needs the liberty to speak freely with these people over the front phone without having to worry about every single word that he's saying being broadcast on the evening news the next night, especially if you're involved in some kind of negotiation or deal. 
That's really important because you can't be worrying about the political implications of what you're going to say to a foreign leader if that is the case. Now, you can't always completely remove that because there's always the chance that the other guy on the other line decides to go to the media with what you told him. So you, you can't just assume that whatever you're saying is always going to be kept confidential. But my point is, there is a certain understood executive privilege there that has been enjoyed by every president, including Barack Obama, including Bill Clinton. You go back down the list and there's nothing wrong with that. Those are kept for the sake of reviewing later, and the, the public can usually get their hands on them after a certain amount of time. But in that moment and in the following weeks and months, you're not supposed to have that kind of stuff available to the public because the president needs to be able to speak freely when talking to these foreign leaders. And that's something that, at least at one time, everybody in both parties understood. When that was compromised, and the president could no longer trust his intelligence people. These leaks were getting out left and right. He had to do something to plug the hole. Now, if he broke the rules and is abusing his presidential power to do this still, then I agree that is a problem. But you do have to ask the question, what else was the man supposed to do? If he can't trust the people around him, actually this guy coming out and trying to put this on display is exactly the reason that Donald Trump did what he did, which is since that time, very early in his presidency, I think that was only a couple months in, if I'm not mistaken, they did this with all the calls. So the idea that this specific call was something nefarious, this specific call was something the president knew, that there was something bad contained within it, and so he singled this one call out, it's not true. And that claim was central to the point of this complaint. That was the point that he was saying, see, the president, he knows that he's doing this, and because of this, he's trying to keep this information back from Congress. But it's not true, because he was doing it with all his calls. Now, you may still be able to make the case that the president shouldn't be doing that because that is a space that is reserved for confidential information, but you can no longer, because of the new information we now have, make the case that this call was being singled out for that purpose, or that President Trump knew that he was doing something sinister, or that President Trump was making this, uh, you know, trying to convinced the Ukrainian president to enter into this deal and was trying to cover his, his tracks. There is no cover-up here because the same thing was done for all the other calls that the president has made to other foreign leaders. And so that completely debunks that portion, that part of the complaint that was issued by the whistleblower. And I got to be honest, frankly, I don't blame the president. I probably do exactly the same thing in his shoes. And goodness knows, I have I have been critical of and even made fun of the president for some of the dumb decisions that he's made. But this one, I see where he's coming from. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, and if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.